Okay, there you go. Exciting. All right, well, welcome the new people that are coming in. I am not Mike. I am not Mike. I, I repeat, new people coming in. I'm not Mike. I know Mike. I'm his co-host for this amazing launch. So we'll start in about two minutes. Uh, we have 50 people in now. So nice to see you, everyone. It's really nice. Hey, Matthew Renee, I know you. Hello, Dan Garza, amazing puppeteer. Yes. Connie, I know you, Connie. Burke Mulligan, Nick Ray, hello, Nick. Christy Holt, Johnny Gooder. So cool. So many people that we know. All right. And maybe you will hear a little girl. And that's actually a little girl. That's my little girl. She's two years old. So if you hear a little girl, it's normal. But I don't think you'll hear her with this noise canceling thing. So. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so we'll start in a minute. I think we have uh, many people there. So I'll mute everyone and I'll put back Mike as a host. Or maybe I'll keep the host, Mike, and I'll put you in. Uh, trying to see. Crazy. Speaker. OK, you have to open your camera so I can. OK, perfect. So Mike, whenever you're ready, I present to you the one and only Mike Harding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Eli. Nice. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for that nice introduction and welcoming everyone, Eli. And everybody, thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, this is really, really, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you guys are all here and taking time out on a Thursday night uh, to be here to help me launch this book. Um uh i'm i'm going to go over what the what's in the book um but first i just wanted to start by introducing myself um in case anyone doesn't know me um but first just again thanks for being here give yourselves a big clap everyone for being here and it was so funny eli when you were saying uh if you hear a little girl in the background i think at that exact second you said that we heard athena uh just like for a second in the background there. So cute. Um, so yeah, my name is Mike, Mike Harding, and I am uh, the owner and puppeteer, chief puppeteer of Apple Fun Puppetry. And um, it's a puppet company that I've been running for about uh, 25 years or so in the Toronto area. And I do puppet shows. <laughs> I do puppet shows for schools and birthday parties and uh, festivals and schools and daycares and places like that. And I love it. I mean, absolutely. I feel so lucky to get to do this job and I never, ever take it for granted. And, um, and um, so uh, it's, it's just like, it's, it's, it's great. And so now what I want to do is pass on my knowledge a little bit of what I've learned over all these years of doing puppet shows and see if I can get uh, kids to be interested in doing puppet shows as well. And that's why I've written this book. And um, um so yeah, um, uh, puppetry is really my passion and, um, and the creativity that goes into it is like um, something that I value highly. And um, so what I want to do tonight is uh, just sort of introduce the book to you guys and tell you about what's in it and um, go through it sort of section by section, but quickly and uh, and then uh, after that, we'll have a couple of guest speakers who are here tonight just to talk a little bit about their experiences with uh, having creative lives, create what uh, what creative creativity has provided for them in their lives, but also specifically puppet shows, um, how they've benefited from pu seeing puppet shows or doing puppet shows in their lives. And um, yeah, and then we'll do a little bit of trivia tonight and there'll be some giveaways uh so there'll be i have three books to give away like signed i'll sign them and everything and send them to you so we're going to do some trivia later some puppet related questions and then after that um i'm going to do a little puppet show for all of you just a little short one um 
so that's sort of the agenda. And um, what I'd like to do first, then, is just sort of talk about the book. Um, if you have any questions or anything, um, or if you, I think Eli may be putting this in the chat, but if you want to tell us where you're from, uh, that would be interesting to know what part of the world you're from. I know there's a lot of people here from Canada and the GTA near where I live, uh, but I think there's some people, I know there's some people from America here from the United States and, and also uh, around the world. So um, yeah, so wherever you're from, put it in the chat. That'd be, that'd be great. And yeah, if you have any questions too, uh, put them in the chat and I'll try, we'll try and answer a few questions at the end. Okay. So let's start to talk about the book a little bit. This is the book here. It's on Amazon now. And uh, as of tonight uh, and throughout tomorrow, probably through the weekend, um, it's reduced. So I've, I've marked the book down about 40%. So now's a good time to get the book if you want to get it. Um, after the weekend, it's probably going to go up to regular price. But right now it's marked down. It makes a really good gift for the holidays. And also you should buy one for yourself, but then buy one as a gift because it's not just for kids. The book is, I sort of wrote it for kids, but I wrote it so that it's sort of hopefully will spark anybody to do a puppet show, right? It's, um, it's written simply and it is written for kids, but that's the point of the book is, is just to create that spark, that spark of creativity. Um, sometimes when I'm doing puppet shows, I think, Hmm, I wonder and I say this at the end of my puppet shows all the time now, but uh, I ask the kids and wonder to myself and then ask them, do you realize that you can do your own puppet shows, right? I just try to make that connection so that kids can make the connection. Oh, this is something I've just seen, but maybe this is something that I can do, right? This is kind of why I wrote the book. So this is why I called it, you can do a puppet show, because I honestly believe that anybody can do a puppet show. Um some of you are, who are here tonight helped me to come up with this title. I did a little survey on YouTube or on uh, on Facebook. So that's how I came up with the title. Um, and then on the back, this has sort of been my catchphrase. This is backwards for me. I don't know if this is backwards for everybody else. I forget how Zoom works. But it says, the world needs more puppet shows. This has been my, mon my mantra. Uh, my mantra. What is it? Mantra? Mantra. F mantra, I think for the past few years is the world needs more puppet shows because I really do think that, you know, uh, creativity, expressing yourself, storytelling, and specifically puppet shows can make the world just that much happier, I think. Robin, thanks for showing that. Robin is showing her artist army. This is the Apple Fun artist army logo. And Robin has a pin. And um, that's also something that I created just to sort of bring artists together and sort of start to create uh, a community around puppet shows, but also create uh, artist, an artist community. So this is the book. Um, I sort of wrote it in five sections. So the five sections are you sort of there's steps to get you from having no puppet show to having a puppet show. First step being make a puppet, which is kind of the basics of it, right? And so the second step is to make a stage and to make props. And the third step would be to make a story. And then the fourth step would be to practice. And then the last step, the fifth step is to perform. So there's five chapters, short chapters, and that's what they are. Make a puppet, make a stage and props, and then um, make a story. And then the final step, or sorry, then you practice. And then the final step is to perform. So in the first section, which is make a puppet, I have some very simple um, ideas for kids to use to make puppets, just simple hand puppets. This one's made just out of two layers of fabric sort of glued together and drawn on. So the very simple ideas, right? Again, it's all about just sparking the ideas and getting them started, right? I mean, this is one, this is a puppet I've been doing for years. Uh, you make it out of just folded paper. Oh yeah, the book is available on Amazon. I think maybe somebody just asked that. Uh, it's on Amazon all over the place um, as of now. Did I say that before? I think I said it before. It's still on Amazon. Here's another puppet uh, just from a crunched up piece of paper. Uh, sorry, crunched up lunch bag. So these are just very easy ways for kids to, or people to make Think about making puppets, right? And then um, just a little tip, make the eyes slightly crossed, makes the puppet more believable. 
So that's the first section. The second section is teaching them and talking just briefly about making a stage, right? And when you do a puppet show, you don't necessarily need a stage, but I talk about making one from a cardboard box because that's what I do. The puppet show that I use, uh, that I take to libraries and birthday parties and everything is just a cardboard box. It's a refrigerator box, right? The one behind me isn't. This is uh, the one I'm going to go into tonight to do a little puppet show for you. That's an old Punch and Judy booth, but um, the one that I travel with is just a cardboard box. So I teach them make make it very simply. Everything that I try to emphasize in my puppet shows and in this book is to not spend very much money, right? Use things from around your house to make your puppet shows, make puppets out of paper, make them out of old fabric, um, lunch bags, right? And then also make um, make your stage from a cardboard box, make your props out of cardboard, okay? So uh, my message is always like, don't spend a lot of money, but also make it easy and make it quick, make it quick and fast, right? And so that you get it done. And then uh, I always tell kids, if, if you like the idea or you like the prop that you made or, or the puppet that you made, you can always make a more elaborate one later, right? But it's always good to start with something simple, I think. So I get that message across in the book. Just keep it simple. The next section, the third section is story. So I give kids little I just want to interrupt. Uh, yes. Just uh, your mom just arrived, but she's late. So just, just so you know. Well, I needed a drink of water anyway, so I'm going to take this. Moment. So Diane, you're late. How embarrassing. Mom, my mom is here, everyone. And my mom is who the book is dedicated to. So while she while this we're on the topic, this is uh for my mom. And she's quoted in this book as well, which I'll get to a little bit later. Um, hi mom. Welcome to the book launch. Uh so I give kids uh some tips on story creating. Uh I never like to say story writing, but story just coming up with stories. And I tell them, and it's in the book a little bit, where can you get stories from? You can get them from stories that you already know and change them a little bit. This is what I do all the time. But I also tell them like a joke that you already know could be a story. A song is a story. Very I just short want to time. interrupt another time. I just want to let you know, Tom Knight just bought a copy of the book. Tom, Tom Knight, I don't know who that is. Tom Knight, I don't know. I'm joking. Seems like a good guy. He is a good guy. Tom Knight is a very famous children's entertainer in the Boston, Massachusetts area. Hello, Tom yeah. Knight. Thank Tom you Knight. for buying the book. Is that I true mean, that he bought a book or did you? Yeah, yeah. It? Let me let me show him so just everybody knows. Is he, he holding it? So show your face as you bought the book. Tom. This is a face of somebody. Uh, okay. Yes. I just bought the book on Amazon. <laughs> Perfect. Just, I just bought it. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So back it's going to be there in a few days. Yes. Yeah, so back to Mike. <laughs> okay. Thanks, All right. Tom. Good to see you, Tom. Uh, yeah, little little points on how to make a story, how to make it uh, interesting, make it shaped like a roller coaster so that the storyline goes up and down, make good things happen and bad things happen. Um, this is a funny part. Uh, make your story short. Three to five minutes is enough. Make it simple, but not too boring. It's important. Simple, but not boring. Uh, so that's it a little bit on making a story and then the fourth section of the book is practicing so I give kids and people who are reading the book some tips on using a puppet properly how to do mouth sync a little bit and which is in here how to make the puppet walk a little bit make sure you don't rest the puppet on the stage make sure you're holding it up all the time all of these things that I do not that well um, but I'm aware of so I put them into the book and ways to practice is you can practice in front of a mirror. You can record yourself on your phone, watch it back later, those kinds of things. And then the last chapter is performing. And so we talk about things like um, audience management a little bit, which is just uh, maybe singing a song at the beginning of your puppet show. If you know how to play any musical instruments or just use a drum or just use a kazoo, anything to draw attention to your puppet show. And also there's a little piece in here about putting down a green line. If anyone's ever seen any of my puppet shows, I always have a green line where the kids sit behind. So little tips for them. And then where can you get, where can you find an audience? That's the last page. Where can you find an audience? Maybe your cousins will watch your puppet show. Maybe your classmates, maybe your pets will watch the puppet show. These kinds of ideas for them. 
some of those people will sleep through your puppet show. Don't take it personally. So that's what's in the book. That's what's in the book. That's everything that's in the book. I've just sort of explained. It uh, goes into a little more um, detail. But, um, and it says this right on the back of the book, you already know how to do a puppet show. I always say this to kids, like, uh, you already know how to do a puppet show. Pup do you ever play when you're playing? Of course, kids play. Um, when you're playing, do you ever make your toys talk to each other? Do you ever make a little story? And they usually say yes. And I said, that's it. That's doing a puppet show. That's the same thing. But now you can use puppets to do it if you want to, or just keep using your toys. That's fine too. Um, but also you can find someone else to watch, watch what you're doing and make up a more elaborate story maybe, and then do a puppet show. So that is the book, everybody. It's, it, I just think it's a good way to um, spend very little money. The book right now is going to cost about $10 on Amazon. If you buy the Kindle version, it's like four or something. Um, and even, even when it's at full price, it's going to be about 16 bucks. And uh, I just think that that's like a pretty good um, way to keep kids or people busy. Like once you get the bug, once you get the bug to do a puppet show, um, it's hours or days or maybe even your whole life uh, uh, spent doing the puppet show, right? So um, hopefully hopefully the book serves to spark some, some interest in doing puppet shows. I just really think um, puppet shows are a great way for kids to express themselves, build confidence, uh, tell their own stories. You know, there's a part in the book that says um, take – whatever you're interested in and put it into your puppet show, right? Whether it be ice cream, whether it be your dog, whatever it is, put it into the story uh, and that'll make it interesting for you. And, and then because it's interesting for you, you'll be able to make your puppet show interesting uh, for audiences to watch. Right. So, so yeah. Um, that's I just, it. I just want to say that Nick Ray just, just bought the book. Nick Ray uh, from high school. Yeah. Nick Ray, thank and you. And, and Mary Beth as well. And I'm sure many more has, uh, but they didn't say. So anyway, back to you. Thanks for mentioning that. No, that's great. Thanks for buying the book, you guys. And um, the links to buy the book, I think Eli is putting them in the chat as we speak through, like just constantly, he's almost constantly putting them there, I think. I bet they've been in there five times or six times already. I don't know, but I bet. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thanks for buying the book. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and, but also I really think, it, um, like I've said numerous times already that it is a good gift and, um, and hopefully it, it just starts something right. When I was a little kid, the very first puppet show that I did was simple and I did it with my cousin, Mark, and it wasn't very good. That's another message that's in the book is like, don't wait for it to be perfect. Make it like bad the first time. It's okay. Have fun, right? Make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, all of that, all of that stuff. So um, this is when I started, when, it was, when, when I was a little kid, the very first one uh, in my parents' basement with a broken tennis ball that my dog had chewed. That was our first puppet, right? So Along those lines of doing a puppet show when you're a little kid, I think we should probably get to my first guest tonight, who is Ann Powell from the Puppet Mongers, and also the Toronto School of Puppetry, which is a place where I learned some of my puppetry skills. Yes, yeah, so I will I will uh, spotlight her whenever you tell me to. Now, now. Okay, so just before, Hold I want to say that Dan Garza just bought the book as well. Thank you, Dan. You're amazing. And Thanks. let's welcome the one and only Anne Powell. Yay. You can unmute. Can you unmute yourself? I don't know if I if you can or not. If not, oh, oh you're unmuted. Muted. I got a button. <laughs> How long do I have? <laughs> as long as you want. And when you're a puppet monger, you, you don't have to even ask. I just wanted to add too that Mike actually also teaches at our puppetry school, Toronto School of Puppetry. So he did. yes, he is skilled. He is knowledgeable. He is <laughs> matured as a puppeteer. <laughs> what can we say? Um, yeah. So thing of um, doing puppetry as a kid. Uh, that's how we got started. Well before we were puppet mongers, just playing with puppets as kids, 
putting together shows, making our parents watch them. It suddenly grew and grew and grew. Local library heard about us. And, oh, money. Oh, good idea. <laughs> sort of grew on and on and on. And now, 50 years later, almost, uh, we're still doing it because who else would employ us to do anything else? Um, yeah, so it, it started in our childhood, too. Yeah, and a lot of what magazine's saying about it's play. Uh, I think the only difference is that when you're playing, often what you're playing with is looking at you. And a puppet show is looking at the audience. You mm. get the audience to watch it instead of you. You're not the audience anymore. It's funny. I do a lot of puppetry in schools. And when they're rehearsing so often, they'll sit themselves around a table in a circle for starters, which doesn't work when you're expecting an audience. But they'll be facing the puppets and rehearsing. And I had to remind them, there's going to be an audience the other side of that. <laughs> Turn them around. <laughs> yeah. Little tips, little tips. But... um. Yeah, it's it's it provides so much for kids. Just don't tell them any tell them that they're learning anything. Because it's education, <laughs> it's collaboration, it's um thinking outside the box, it's being inventive and creative, it's um oh, it's fine motor skills development, it's um solving problems, it's uh, yeah, it's yeah, so much. <laughs> um it's it's great. Um yeah, I just was working in a class recently and um so it, it was a residency a few days and I noticed in the middle of it when they're all just busy some of them were sewing or they were adding stuff to their costumes there was this just this low hum in the class because it was so relaxed and um, I know I had another class some years ago a much older group and it was very quiet and one of the boys said you know what this is so relaxing he was sewing a costume like maybe mm. grade six or so and they all just loved it yeah this is nice <laughs> that's it's, lovely it just sort of brings down the hecticness mm -hmm. it's very nice and yet, they're really being very creative and, and making stuff for the first time, learning new skills. Yeah, learning how to use materials in different ways that they wouldn't expect. You can, as as my, um, Mike said, um, you can use your own toys, you can use things around the house, objects, kitchen implements, um, whatever. You can just animate. It's just a matter of bringing it alive, what we sometimes call it, um, giving it the illusion of thought. So it can be anything that can seem to think for itself, um, rather than just being something in your hands. So, yeah. What else can I say? It's good. That's lovely, Anne. Thanks so much. And I just, I mean, what you mentioned there about the meditative aspect of it is yeah. something I hadn't even considered, uh, yeah. but it's so true, right? Yeah. Anytime you're making anything. Yeah. Well, I can go even... and forget that I'm hungry or need the bathroom or anything. It's just, yeah. It was, yeah. But also sometimes when you're performing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know David mentions what, there's one particular show we do where he goes in, he's very aware of it. And then he suddenly re realizes we're almost at the end. It's just that middle chunk. And it's yeah. not like he's going by rote because he's just so totally in it. Yeah. But time, he just, whew, what's his time anymore? Yeah. 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 So lovely. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, you're welcome. I just wanted to add, I don't think you mentioned this, but what I've always found fascinating about you and David is your brother and sister. Mm. Did you mentioned that? I'm not sure, but. I didn't say that. No. Well, I'm I just, not sure. we used to play as kids, but yes, we are. Yeah. This is what I think is just like the best. I mean, you guys did this when you just never stopped playing together, I guess. And oh, like, playing. oh, we argue and everything too, but we, oh. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we're supposed to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how you get it done, yeah. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much for being here, Anne. I, that was great. Well, oh, one thing I wanted to point yeah. out, slightly different from the way you've got things that organized in your book and the way you do things, we actually go for the story first because then that leads hmm. to what are the characters we need. Um, what's the set the scenery how are we setting it um where's it going um yeah and then we sort of work the script sort of underpins everything and just gives us decisions about what kind of puppetry and the characters and so on to work with just a different approach yeah i've done it that way too right yeah yeah mm -hmm. it certainly is interchangeable i think mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and yeah for sure sometimes that's where the characters can go either way right yeah absolutely mm -hmm. whatever works yeah. Yeah. yeah cool all right then thanks so much welcome Thanks for being here. Um, so before we get to the next guest, which is Eli, the host, uh, the co-host, uh, we're going to do trivia first, right, Eli? We have a little trivia question. We're yes. going to give, give away a book. So hopefully you didn't already buy the book and then you win the book. Can you imagine? Then you'll have like eight copies. Oh, no, it's fine because if you win one, you give it to someone else. So you help someone else to stop not being creative. You know, it's the best thing to stop no. not being creative. Stop not being creative. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. What a good thing to give someone. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, we have uh, Chris and Angela Owen who bought uh, a book. And then Emma and Jackie just bought the book, Campbell. Uh -huh. 
uh, for you. They will wait for you to sign it when you are next at their school. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we have. There you go. So we have Linda Sidarius who bought the book as, as well. Sidarius, I, I hope I say it well. So let's go with the trivia and, and let's make a winner. All right, let's make a winner. So when you come up with the answer to this, we're going to take the first person who writes it in the chat. So Eli will, well, we'll see in the chat who puts the first correct answer in. So get your typing fingers ready, everyone. Yeah, and by the way, even if you got one book, this one is very unique because I don't know if you know this, but Mike is a celebrity. <laughs> so you're going to get a signed book from a celebrity that's Mark. worth millions, just so you know. It's worth millions of dollars. I once sent a Rolex watch. No, it's 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 actually millions of cents. Oh yeah, yes. which is like a uh, hundred bucks. <laughs> I think I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> the first question is the first trivia question is you can get ready for it. What is the name of the dog on Mister Dress Up? The first person, I realize now this is a Canadian-centric. Oh, we have Robin. Yeah. Robin was the first. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> Robin. It's like if she knew the question. I think it she, is like that. she felt it. Have you oh. ever seen Robin type? She types really fast. Yeah, so we have Robin who has who's the first. We have Christian Holt, Chris Owen, Melanie Skeen. Tom Knight was wrong with Thor. Cheryl and Daniel were right. Jay was uh, said Casey, Rufus, Emma. No, it's not Rufus. It's Finnegan. So we have the winner and we have someone here who says not fair. We're in the US. Yeah, that wasn't fair. But don't worry, because the next trivia question will be not <laughs> Canadian centric. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. My so apologies. let's let's Thor spotlight, was a good answer, uh, though. Thor let's is... spotlight uh, Robin just for a sec. Congratulations, Robin. Hey, Robin. A signed book that's worth millions for you. Thank you and congrats. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Billions. Okay. So, Eli, you're the next guest, so you might as well stay high, uh, spotlighted. Spotlight. Oh, yeah. Well, stay with me because I am uh, i don't want to be alone. You're nervous. You're very shy. So what do you want me to say? <laughs> Didn't we go over this? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to look at the paper. I think you should. Eli says how much Mike is the best <laughs> and why he, okay. So Mike is the best. I don't know if you knew, but there's a, there's a song that my little girl always listens to. It's called my daddy is the best from Coco. Uh, what's it? Coco, Coco something. It's songs for kids. So I would say that the song should Coco have melon. Coco melon. Exactly. It's if you want to become crazy, listen to this. So um, <laughs> I think the song should have been called Mike is the best. Because nice. I joke a lot, but I am I can be serious. But Mike is very, very, I don't know if you can say this, very amazing, but he's very amazingly amazing as a human being, as an entertainer, as a puppeteer, as a friend, as a dog owner, as a boyfriend. I never went, uh, I never been the boyfriend of Mike, but I'm sure he's an amazing boyfriend. Um, uh, I'm already taken anyway with them. And we have the same, our, our, our girlfriend have the same name. So he copied me. My girlfriend is called Carol, Caroline and your girlfriend is Caroline. She's so it's here. Fine. She's well, here. hello, Carolyn. Hello. I appreciate you. I, I cannot wait to meet you. So anyway, so Mike is amazing. And the fact that he wrote a book, I wrote a book first, just so you know. <laughs> so this is my book. So you should get a copy as well. Uh, I can sign it, but it's going to be worth like $1 or something like this. So it's not as good as Mike. But, um, but without like, um, I was really happy for him to write a book because I always, always told him that his knowledge had to be in the hands of other people because of, you know, when you become very like um, successful as a person or as an entertainer, it's important to give back. And by the way, Mike also gives back like to uh, charitable organizations. He does this. He has a big heart 
And, and this is what I, I, I find amazing about this guy. Like he does so many things. And I mean, I would like him to run for a prime minister for, for Canada. I don't know if, if we would agree. He would not have time to do puppet shows or maybe he would, but it would be different puppets. So anyway, um, so, uh, <laughs> so anyway, I, I don't know what to say, Mike, you're amazing. I'm so glad to see all these people here. And I think they all believe the same about you. And we have Christian Holt who says, parliament will never be boring if you were running for prime minister. I agree. Hmm. So thank you so much for everything you do. I, I believe that uh, sane, very sane entertainment like you do for kids is crucial in the era of social media and the TikToks of this, of this, of this world. Uh, I find it to become very un, unhealthy for kids to be on these platforms. That's my, my personal viewpoint uh, because of the lack of control there is on these platforms. So taking them and making them be more creative with your book is such an amazing idea and is actually a responsibility that you're taking, right? So thank you so much for doing this. And uh, I have my copy and it's signed. I have the first signed copy, I think, maybe. Maybe your mom does. Nope. Uh, no, it's not signed. Okay, it's only written Mike, so it's worth nothing. Anyway, <laughs> I'll try to sell it on eBay and see what happens. So thank Good you so much, Mike. That's it for my speech. All right. Back Thanks to you. so much. Thanks, yeah, Eli. Pleasure. Thanks for those kind words, first of all. Well, you wrote them. so. Yeah, I wrote all that stuff. <laughs> so five bucks. And um, But I also just wanted to elaborate on what you said there about, yeah, yeah, part of the 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 mindset behind writing the book was yeah to get just it's the screens right um an alternative just like we encourage kids to play a sport or we try to get them to get, go outside or whatever this is another thing that i think we can encourage them to be doing besides being on screens that's all just to provide an alternative right more alternatives the better and so uh hopefully that that's part of and uh I think re you get that, Eli, for sure, that that's an important part of what Yeah, I'm and by to. the way, Connie Burke Mulligan just bought the book. Thanks, Connie. Buying the book. And uh, Chris Owen has to go, but they, they thank you. Oh, smooth man. That's my one of my roommates from university. All right. So let's do one more trivia. Uh, I think, no, we have two more trivias. So the next trivia is this, get your typing fingers ready. Uh, this one is for everybody and not just Canadians. Uh, what is the name? What is the name of, look at Robin is getting ready to type again. <laughs> what is the name of my main character? The main Apple phone is on my shirt. This guy, the orange guy, someone will get this. That was fast. I don't know how. The, I think some people. I think it's rigged. Some people know the the, the questions. I mean, this know, guy, buddy. Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith got got it like in, in a split second. Curtains. <laughs> he was ready. He probably had it typed in already. <laughs> cool, so it's Kevin good. Smith. Congratulations, K man. So that Tom Knight got it wrong once again. It's not Mister Rogers. Uh, Jay, you got it. Cheryl, Nick, Sharla, Linda, Christian, Sophie, Joe, Jonathan, you got it. Sophie, oh, Sophie wrote it in a private chat. So better luck next time. Zoom, okay. Zoom in its functions. So congratulations, Kevin. Good job, Kevin. The book is on its way to you. We'll get your addresses afterwards. I'll reach out to everybody. And so let's get to the next final guest. And uh, it's Sophie, actually, funnily enough. So let Sophie, me find Sophie. Sophie. Sophie Little. Sophie, Sophie Little. Will... Yes. Okay. One sec. So I'll I'll put you in the spotlight. There she is. Hello. Hi, Sophie. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Congratulations on your book launch. Thanks. Um, so much. I remember seeing you when I was like, you know, just in kindergarten and, you know, gradually through the years and I got, um, a brother. So I continued watching you in my teens. Um, 
you know, I remember Curtin um, when he was still in his prime days. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, I just, I absolutely loved coming to your puppet shows. They were very inspiring and they were super creative, um, you know, and it like, it helped me to create some of my own creativity. It wasn't puppet shows, but um, started making and selling some jewelry, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I love just watching your puppet shows, even as an adult now. <laughs> Yeah, because I think you got the advent calendar too, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You were seeing them even, yeah. So yeah, I remember Sophie coming in the very earliest shows that I ever did were at Chapters at the bookstore in Brampton. Yeah. And yeah, like Sophie said, she was in kin. I think you were even young. I would have said you were like three or four. Maybe, I don't remember those ones, but yeah. But yeah, you came for like quite a while. So yeah, you and she, you just responded so for such a young person. Uh, you responded so much to the puppet thing and it really inspired me I'm you know to have you getting what I was doing uh, yeah such a young age so you're I think probably my oldest like not oldest in terms of how old you are but you're my yeah. oldest one, I think yeah so that's well, I I all of them what's that we always tried to come to every single one of your puppet shows and there's one time I remember it was at the library it wasn't you and I was kind of like, okay, can we go home instead? <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Thanks so much for being here, Sophie. And of course. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, your business, you run a little business, right? Selling jewelry and stuff, right? Yeah. I haven't it. really been doing that a whole lot just because I've been working a lot more now. Yeah. But... So that was a long time ago. We've known each other for a very long time. Cause yeah the very first puppet shows that I ever did and that's really when those puppet shows that you were seeing back then were like me just hammering it out and figuring out <laughs> what worked and what didn't so you in so some ways really helped me to define a mm -hmm. lot of it. well I've seen you grow as a puppeteer as well yeah because I guess you've seen different shows right and uh, and then the advent calendar thing yeah. yeah yeah I remember that time uh when I did a show at the Brampton Library when you were a teenager and you guys were there yeah but i didn't know you were there until the very end and you came yeah. up, parents came up and said this is who this is i was like oh my goodness i couldn't believe it yeah so yeah <laughs> my brother was there so so cool yeah yeah thanks for being here sophie that's awesome thanks for all the guests eli and also ann for speaking tonight and we'll do one more trivia question and then i'll do a little quick puppet show for everybody before uh, we go and so the next and last uh, puppet related question is a multiple choice. So this one, get your uh, puppet. <laughs> Tom Knight already rolled the apples. Yes, you're right. It's apples, the answer. Tom Knight okay. wins. Uh, <laughs> best answer prize. <laughs> All right. Go apples on. is incorrect. Apples is incorrect. But it's okay. Thanks for playing, Tom. Fun with apples. No. Okay, so this question is, what kind of puppet is this? I didn't even show it yet. What kind of puppet is this? I'm going to give multiple choice on this one. Is it, I guess I should read them out, and then I'll put the puppet up, and then you guys can, yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah. So what kind of puppet is this? A, hand puppet. B, mouth puppet. C, marionette. D, tabletop puppet. Here comes the puppet. Are you ready? Oh, that was fast. Wow. You guys are fast. Like you're on the you're on the keyboards like crazy. So we have a winner. Do we do winner. You know what it is? I don't think you know the answer to this, Eli. Yeah, it's written on the paper. Oh yeah, it's written on the paper. <laughs> I can read. So uh it doesn't look like it. So it's hand hand puppet. Mm -hmm. And everybody, just but just so you know, I'm from Quebec. That's why the accent, I don't know if you realize this, but I'm from <laughs> Quebec. So anyway, um, so it's a Jay Catalfamo who won. Yeah. With, he wrote Hand. Hand puppet. Good, Jay. Yeah. Jay's kids who are like in their 20s or 30s now saw me when they were little. And so he, we go way back uh, as well. 
So very old, old customer. Not Jay's not old. Jay's very young and youthful. He's handsome. Look at this. How handsome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Congrats. Jay. You got it. I'll send that book to you, signed and everything. All right. So the last thing to do is just do a little puppet show, I think, um, because uh, we're running out of time. So <clears throat> during COVID and where a lot of the ideas for this book came from, I to keep myself busy because there was no performing to be had, I was doing online puppet shows. And they were little things that I would make up. I would do them twice a week and I'd write them in the morning and do them live on the internet in the afternoon. And it and it really made me um, think about how to put puppet shows together easily and quickly. And a lot of those ideas went into this book. So I just wanted to do one of them tonight uh, for you. So I'm going to go into the puppet show now and do that. So I have to adjust my camera and everything. Uh, so here we go. Uh, before I start any puppet show, I always like to sing the beginning of the puppet show song with my ukulele. This is a Brampton ukulele. Usually you get these in Hawaii. This is from Brampton, but it still works. And I'm going to sing for you the beginning of the puppet show song. It goes like this. Welcome to the puppet show, the puppet show, the puppet show. Welcome to the puppet show. It's about to begin. Then it goes like this. Sing it with me, everyone. Here we go. Take a big breath first. Copy my face. Here we go. Everybody. Give yourselves a clap for good singing. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go into the puppet show. Don't worry, everyone. It's going to be short and sweet and simple, but don't worry, not boring. Just like I wrote in the book. I'm moving the puppet show forward so that I can... You can see it better. And let me go see if the puppets are in here. Where are they? Where are they? Magenta, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, go. Go, everyone's waiting for you. Oh, okay, good. I'm going to make a puppet show. Oh, hello, everyone. Here I come. It's me. It's me, Magenta. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. My name is Magenta. I want to make a puppet show, but I don't know how to make a puppet show. I have no idea how to make a puppet show, so I'm going to need some help. Oh, everyone, it's my sister, Char Char. Hello, Char Char. Hello, Magenta. Hello, everyone. My name is Char Char. I know how to make a puppet show. Char Char, you know how to make a puppet show? How do you know how to make a puppet show? Because I read the book. I read the book, Magenta. Everybody, I read the book. It's a great book that makes a great gift. Buy one for yourself and give one to somebody else. Okay. What's in the book? Well, there's all the steps. Here's all the steps, Magenta. You got to make a puppet. Okay. You got to make a stage and the props. Okay. You make a little story. All right. Then what? Then after that, you practice. Practice? That sounds boring. Uh, is it boring? Well, sometimes. But sometimes it's fun. And when you're done, you're going to be good at it. So it's worth it. Okay. What else? What else, Char Char? Well, also, you're going to need to perform. You're going to have to find somewhere to perform. Maybe I'll perform for everybody right now. You're going to do it? Yeah, I think I can do it. I think you can do it, too. Bye, everybody. Okay, everyone. I'm going to do it. My sister, Char Char, told me all the steps from the book. And so I'm going to go make a puppet and do a puppet show for you. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm doing it, everybody. Okay. I finished making a puppet. Now I'm making a stage. Okay, I'm done. Look at this, everybody. Oh, good. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. <clears throat> okay, there it is, everyone. I made a puppet stage. Stage. Out of a box. And now I'm going to go into the puppet stage and do a little puppet show for you. Here I go. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. Um... My name is, um, Steve. I'm going to tell you a joke. Uh, knock, knock. And then you go, who's there? Mm -hmm. Uh, boo. I say, boo. And then you go, boo hoo. And then I go, uh, what's the matter? Why are you crying? There you go. There you go, everyone. Thank you for watching my puppet show. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I did it. I did it. Did you see that? 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did a puppet show. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Oh, I did a puppet show. I'm going to move this puppet stage. Hang on. <laughs> oh, good. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching my puppet show. Was it good? Mm, that was okay. Hi, Magenta. Did you do a puppet show? Hey, Char Char. I did do a puppet show. How did it go? Well, my puppet show wasn't very good. Oh, that's okay. Who cares? What? What do you mean, who cares? Oh, it's okay. Your first puppet show, you should make a lot of mistakes. The important thing is, did you have fun? I did have fun. Well, that's good. Why don't we go and find somebody else to watch your puppet shows? Okay, let's go, Char Char. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching my puppet show. Let's go. Okay. Oh, Bravo! there we go. <laughs> I did it. I did a puppet show. Well, Magenta did the puppet show. Hey, that's uh, one of the ones that I came up with through COVID and uh, decided to do it again. So oh, thanks for being here, everyone. That's about it. The book is on uh, Amazon, so you can get it there. And Eli has put the, the in the chat uh, where you can get it. Just before we go, if anyone wants to ask anything or has any questions, I don't know. if the, Was there any questions, Eli, that you wanted to bring attention to? I, um, I unmuted everyone. So uh, if you want to ask a question or, or say something, you're welcome. You can communicate. Wow. Um, or not. So <laughs> you can type in the chat if you want to say something, but. Uh, we have yeah. a question. Oh, Wayne, Wayne and yeah, Wayne Lawson. Yeah. What, what is the question? We have a question. Ask a question. Oh, the, the question is, how many other people have seen a puppet show at your mother's house besides me? <laughs> Wayne is my mother's cousin and also therefore my I think second cousin we don't know how that works like that. I have no idea hi Wayne I, that was so excellent oh I did well, you did I, give me a sample years ago at your mom's place and I was just blown away it was you, amazing oh thanks Wayne I, like, was I, like, I, didn't re, I didn't realize you had talent that's the thing I, well, thank you for <laughs> I mean, uh, I get by. Like, nobody Wait. else in the family has talent. So <laughs> we, you know, it's just kind of strange that you did somehow. <laughs> I like to tell the story of when your dad, who was my mom's uncle, uh, came to see my puppet show at the library. And after the puppet show, he said to me, that's a hard way to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. He was right. Yeah. But it's okay. And he's called life insurance. So yeah. <laughs> so that's right. All right. So we have other questions. So thank you guys. So um uh Mike, we have another question uh from I will unmute you. How can okay, you're unmuted. I unmuted myself. So we have a question from Nick Ray who asks, Do you ever suffer from stress? Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, unmute yourself, Mike. Can you unmute yourself? No. Hold on a sec. Mike is muted. I muted you, Mike. I'm sorry. I will unmute you right now. Mike Harding asked to unmute. Okay. Good. Um. Do I, yeah. Do I get stressed? Of course. Uh, yeah, I get stressed all the time, Nick. Uh, I don't know if you want advice on that but i guess um i have a thing in my office it's a sign and i wrote it's just a chalkboard i wrote perfect on the on the chalkboard and then i crossed it out so eliminating the um the expectation that things be perfect already this is in the book too uh that helps but stress never goes away <laughs> all right so thanks for your question by the way i'm just putting in the chat so as mike said I'm putting in the chat the links for Canada or US, depending where you're from. So buy one for yourself and one for a friend or buy two for yourself and two for a friend. Everything is allowed. So we have other questions here. Um, how much from Jane? 
how much might charge for an event? Ooh. Well, it depends, Jane, on the where it is. Um, so if it's in the United States, for example, it would be a lot. Millions. But it depends where where it is and how many how many kids are there, how many people are there. So. Okay, good, perfect. So Jane, he can contact you. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll write Jane, money sign. It's reasonable, okay. though, Jane. You'd be surprised. Yeah, it's very cheap. All right. So do you have some magic rituals to get an energy boost before a show when you're already feeling drained, but the show must go on? From Mathieu Rene. Any rituals? Not really rituals. Um, uh, honestly, Mathieu, desperation half the time is what gets, gets you uh, motivated. The show has to go on and has to be uh, good. So I don't really have any tricks or tips. No, I just try to, you know, be well rested generally and eat well and uh, exercise and that kind of thing. Um, when it comes time to this show, hopefully all of that stuff pays off. Uh, breathing. Remember to breathe. Good. Excellent answer. Uh, Kevin Smith asks, do you still have your turtle? No, that turtle died many, many years ago. But thanks for remembering that turtle, Kevin. Nigel and Mansell. Uh, not Nigel and Mansell. That's a race car driver's name. Nigel and... There's two turtles. Nigel and Sydney. They're good. Dead. Well, good. D dead turtles are, are, are okay. So um, we, have, we have Marvin S Sudarius who says, have watched you from the beginning and cannot be more... Uh, proud of how far you have come. Looking forward to getting my signed copy and see what you are doing, going to do next. TV, perhaps. Ooh. Thanks, Marvin. Yes. My old friend, Marvin. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, Alison Hendrick says, congratulations, Mike. Get myself a copy and looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Alison. Who is that? Alison Hendricks. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to do a workshop in the new year yep i'll Great. see you then elise handelman says i have a question excellent you can write it in the chat um <laughs> andrew gertz says i have a question yes write it in the chat um douglas says did you self-publish i did i self-published this book yeah with eli's help eli did it before me as he mentioned and so that was helpful to have him paved the way and yes. i used fiverr uh somebody on fiverr to design the cover and, and to do the layout and everything but i did all of the writing and um illustrations this is the best gift combination for for the holidays you see. <laughs> what a combination they're the same size so they look nice on the shelf <laughs> if you're self-publishing make your book a little bit thicker so you get a spine because i only get this white spine eli got like a whole spine you got to make at least 75 or 100 pages, I think. I don't know. All right. Um, so uh, long time. Tiny so letter. Ja yeah. Yeah, you can write your name on it. So Johnny Gooder says, long time listener, first time caller, just letting you know, Blinky is still in the Rose Theater. <laughs> All right, that's an insight. Blinky is, uh, Johnny Johnny worked uh, works or worked at the uh, Rose Theater in Brampton, and I used to host the Brampton Indie Arts Festival there. And the tech, he was a sound guy or a lighting guy, and they needed to figure out a way to cue me. To, I was hosting it and and emceeing the event, and they needed a way for to cue me to stop talking. With the, I was hosting it with the puppet, um, so they put this light on a stick kind of thing, and I put a face on it, and they would make the light go on and off and i made a puppet character out of it um anyways i guess you had to be there thanks Thank john that was funny that's a good, funny memory good memories all right so we have we have uh, lots of fun jay there. who would like to say something so jay now is your time to to shine why did it why did it oh jay are you, are you frozen uh, who's frozen oh there you go so ask to unmute up oh, there we go hey jay hey mike how are you Good. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Right. Hey, I just just want to make a comment. Um, I mean, I've got four kids. One of them is much too well. Yes, but the three older ones, 
um, now well into their twenties, by the way, employed and everything else, they still remember curtains. They remember your shows. And I just wanted to say, thank you. Uh, you created something that was really special to them. It was something that they looked forward to. And now, and we are talking two decades later, very much like Sophie, uh, <laughs> your number one fan over there. Uh, my kids too, uh, really remember curtains and we still laugh about them and talk about them. So thanks very much for creating it. I just wanted to pass that along. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, Appreciate it's good it. to see you again. Yeah. Nice to see you as well. That's really nice. Yeah, I remember oh, those shows fondly. So cool. Um, we have Maribeth who says, how do you manage the crowd from behind the puppet show stage? Mary Jo asked that. Maribeth Another... Span Mank, like bank, but with Maribeth. an M. Yeah, because Mary Beth does her puppet shows, I think, without a stage and everything. I hope for the best. <laughs> That's how I manage it. I do the green line. I talk to them before the show. I try to set the expectation with the ukulele song in a fun way, the rules of the puppet show. Use the green tape. Yeah, uh, make a line. And then part of it is relying on uh, the kids, trusting the kids and the parents and whoever's supervising to help and that mostly works and i think also though the show is engaging like i don't do a show that's um uh uh quiet and they sit and watch like the the puppets talk directly to the kids so even if one's getting up past the green line the puppet might say to them don't forget to stay sitting down but that's tricky i wouldn't really advise that because that can become a game right so um uh, anyway that's i don't know I'm not sure. I just, uh, I hope that the cosmos takes over and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, the puppet gods are shining on me that day. And uh, Perfect. Everything. Yeah. The puppet gods. All right. So, and, and uh, we have Andrew Geertz who asked, how long did it take to make Magenta and her sister? Oh, good question. I didn't make, usually I make my own puppets, but Magenta who is a boy, it doesn't matter. And his sister, Char Char, it, they are uh, Diabolo puppets. So I don't know if Steven's here. I, I, he might be here he, or was here. Uh, Steven in Quebec makes those puppets. And he was kind enough during COVID, at the beginning of COVID, he sent me a bunch of his puppets, which I used continuously through COVID on the internet um, to make a little, little Di the wild world of the Diabolo puppets. So those ones I didn't make, uh, Magenta and, and Char Char, I didn't make. Char Char is named after my friend uh, Charla, by the way, uh, sort of. That's like, uh, that's sort of where I got that name. But yeah, I have a bunch of his puppets, Diabolo puppets. They're excellent and they're pretty reasonably priced. But usually I make my own. And when I make them, just to answer your question, when I make a puppet, it takes like a day or two to make a puppet with naps, Ooh. with no naps, four hours. Wow. Naps are good. All right. So um, when did you start playing the ukulele at the beginning of your shows, asks Elise Handelman. Uh, I think the ukulele got added into the mix around the time I came up with a show called Chicken Little, and it was a farm show. And I think I initially wanted that to be a banjo, sort of to be like farm country sort of thing and but the ukulele maybe was something that i already had and was easier to learn to play i forget how that came around but then once i started doing it for that one show i'm like oh i should do this for every show because it's a fun way to kids love the ukulele because it's little right and um um uh it's an accessible instrument so um yeah, I think probably, I don't know, 20 years ago, I started using the ukulele. I don't know if I did it chapters in those early days. Sophie, do you remember that if I used the ukulele back then? Did I? Do you know? Were you When you were four years old, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I, I can't always remember you doing the ukulele, so. Okay. Maybe, so maybe it was before that then. So, although that Chicken Little show was pretty early on. Uh yeah, so anyway, pretty early on, I started with the ukulele thing. It's the only song I know how to play is the Green Line song. I don't know any other songs. I used to know like four or five songs, and I don't know them anymore. That's a very good song. Thanks. So that's all for the questions, and I think you're past your bedtime anyway. So, oh, yeah. 
everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. I really, really appreciate your support and taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here tonight. So again, give yourselves a big clap. And thanks so much to my guests. Thanks to Anne and thanks to Sophie. And of course, thanks to Eli for helping me to host this. Pleasure. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's it. I guess we'll sign off. Yeah, let me scroll through and see everybody's faces. Yeah, it's amazing yeah, to see everyone. everyone. You guys are amazing. You stayed through the whole thing. Yeah. Thanks so much. So cool to have you. All right. Good so night, you, better, you, you better get the book, though, right? For me, I already have it. That was the point. No, I'm talking to them. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the book. Did you put the link in the in the thing? The link. Oh, yeah. The... Let me put them again. Okay. Before Don't... you leave. There you go. There's a link. I'm going to click on the link. I'm going to buy a copy for myself, and then I'm going to buy one for Eli, and then I'm going to buy one for Thor and uh, read it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here. Good night. Thank you so much.